The G5 Twin is the only field serviceable refrigerant recovery machine in the industry. The KTG 520R kit replaces worn seals, valves, and springs on the pistons and cylinder heads. Here is the list of necessary and recommended tools for a successful repair. Begin the repair by removing the case screws. Remove the side panels by firmly striking the underside of the handle, then use a flathead screwdriver to pry between the panel gap. Remove the side panels. Next, remove the fan shroud. Stack both support brackets underneath the motor to stabilize the machine. Disconnect the number 3 wire from the power switch and the black wire from the pressure switch. Cut the cable ties holding the wires together. Using a 9 16 wrench and a 5 8 wrench, loosen the condenser flare fittings. Be sure to loosen the flare only and do not loosen the fitting in the cylinder head. Next, remove the faceplate and set it off to the side. Turn the machine onto its side, then remove the cylinder head bolts. Repeat this step on the other side. After removing the cylinder head, remove the cylinder. It is important to take note of the exact position of the shims for reassembly. Do not discard the shims. Remove the slide seal. Next, Cut the piston seal, being careful not to scratch the anodizing of the piston. Then, use needle nose pliers to remove the O-ring. Repeat these steps on the other side. Inspect the surface and edges of the pistons for scratches or excessive wear. If the pistons are damaged, contact Appion for additional support. Install the new slide seal and O-ring. Install the piston seal by stretching it into the groove. Using a pen or soft round tool can help make installation easier. Repeat these steps on the other piston. Next, remove the worn valves, springs and O-rings from the valve plate and cylinder head. Use wire cutters to cut off the tip of the input valve. Discard all worn seals, springs, and valves. Inspect the surface and edges of the valve plate and the cylinder head. It's important that the sealing surfaces between the valve and valve plate are smooth. If the valve plate or cylinder head is damaged, contact Appion for additional support. Add a couple drops of oil in the cylinder head, then install the proper sized O-rings. Install the wider spring into the cylinder head with the narrow end down, then install the output valve. Install the new input valve. It's necessary to thread the spring onto the valve until it has completely cleared the lip. 
Use needle nose pliers to crimp and twist the input spring's smallest coil to ensure it does not slip over the input valve catch lip. Add a couple drops of oil and install the new O-rings. Align the notches of the valve plate and cylinder head. Then install the newly assembled valve plate into the cylinder head. Repeat these steps on the other cylinder head. Wipe the cylinder clean and then inspect the surface and inside of the cylinder for any scratches or excessive wear. A damaged cylinder may not fully seal and could leak when reassembled. If the cylinder is damaged, contact Appion for additional support. Add a couple drops of oil to the inside of the cylinder and spread it to coat the entire surface. Install the shims in the same position and side as they were removed. Install the cylinder back into place, then rotate the compressor using the fan until the piston is in the top dead center position. Ensure the piston is slightly below the top edge of the cylinder, otherwise damage may occur when the machine is started. Repeat these steps on the other side. Align the notch of the newly assembled cylinder head towards the relay and place it back on the cylinder. If the notch is not aligned to the top of the machine, it will not build pressure when started. Add a drop of blue thread locker to the cylinder head bolts. Tighten the cylinder head bolts in a crisscross pattern until snug. Rotate the fan to float the snug cylinder into center position. Fully tighten the cylinder head bolts to 40 inch pounds. A torque wrench is recommended, but if one is not available, this is roughly hand tight. Rotate the fan to check for piston to valve plate contact. The fan should spin the motor and compressor smoothly without significant resistance. If contact is felt, you may need to adjust the cylinder height with shims. Do this for both sides. Next, reattach the faceplate, then tighten the condenser flare fittings. Reconnect the wiring to the faceplate. The wire numbered 3 goes back into the power switch and the remaining disconnected black wire goes into the pressure switch. Reattach new cable ties and cut off the excess. When aligning the support brackets, be sure that the bolt on the motor rests in the bolt slot. The tabs on the support brackets should fit inside the motor case slot, not overlapping it. Reassemble the case by placing the side panel with the label down. Next, align both support brackets on each side of the motor. Holding onto the brackets, lift the machine up and slide the assembly into the case. Make sure no wires are caught between the panels during reassembly. Be sure to line up the faceplate to fit in the designated slot on the side panel. Next, reinstall the fan shroud being sure to line up the correct edges into the slot. Slide the other side panel into position, then firmly hit the bottom and top of the side panel into place. Tighten all of the case screws.
quickly turn the machine on and off once to listen for any possible rubbing from the fan. If the fan is rubbing, it will be necessary to remove the panels and realign the machine and support brackets in the case. After the test start, be sure to run a bench test to ensure the G5 Twin is performing to standard. Field serviceability helps make the G5 Twin the leading recovery machine in the industry.